Okay, the B video. We're on page 388 now, section four review. When did you do page, uh, question numbers 34 and 35? This reaction we done last year. I took over in the fume hood some iron powder, which was magnetic, sulfur powder, which was not, mixed them together, shook them together. This iron was still magnetic. Then we heated it in a test tube. We got it hot. An orange light was given off when it got hot because the reaction went and it was exothermic and the orange light moved through there and it got brighter. Uh, I added extra sulfur because some burns off. And then when we were done, the pellet that we got, and I've got some of them around here, test it, test it with a magnet, it's not magnetic. I gotta write myself a note. I just realized today that our wire meshes, I gotta buy more, and I forgot to say something, it just occurred to me. Okay, now in this problem, they've already given you the balanced chemical equation. Uh, the difference is we have an excess of sulfur. When we did this before, we had Fe and an S to give us FeS, which happens. You also can get two Fe's plus three S to give you Fe2S3. When you do a reaction, sometimes you don't just get one permutation of the product, you get different ones. And you can change the reaction conditions usually to favor one over another. And this one is throw it in there and heat it and you get what you get. Anyway, on this one, we're starting with 83.77 grams of iron and an excess of sulfur. Now later, after we're done with the first lab, we'll talk about how to determine and limiting an excess reactant. But right now, this is just excess. And that should determine how much product we get. So we want the theoretical yield in grams, which means we want to know X grams Fe2S3. X equals so many grams Fe2S3. So we are going from grams Fe to grams Fe2S3. So we're going grams, mass to moles to moles to mass and grams. We're doing the whole thing. And if we start with what we know, which is the 83.77, be grams Fe, then we have to convert it. Okay, iron, Fe, is playing the role of A. And then we're going to go to moles A, moles iron. Now, yeah, we can get a little closer on that. And then we can go to moles of B. Fe2S3 is playing the role of B. Moles Fe2O3. And then we're going to grams. I better give myself a little bit more room there. Grams, Fe2O3. S3, S3. I'm performing miracles here. I'm not authorized to do that. I'm used to writing Fe2O3 because that's garden variety rust. S3, Fe2S3. Okay, good enough. Now, this goes here, this goes here, this goes here. Grams Fe down here. Moles Fe down here. Moles Fe2S3 down here. Whoops. All right. 
right? Now, we could anticipate that those things are going to cancel even without the numbers. So we, we can be fairly confident our setup is correct. We do, however, have to put the right numbers in there, but moles Fe cancels here. Moles Fe2S3 cancels last. Now, where do you get the moles from? The periodic table. And in the periodic table, one mole of iron is 55.8 grams. Okay, I'll do that one in purple since it comes from the periodic table. And that symbol is in purple. 55.8. And then the next thing comes from the balanced chemical equation. So I'll do those in red. Hey, two moles of iron gives us one mole of Fe2S3. Coefficient. And the last one comes from the periodic table. A mole of Fe2S3. How much is its mass? Well, sulfur is 32 and iron is 55.8. So 55.8 is 112.6 plus 96, which is going to be 190 something. Okay. So 55.8 times 2 equals 111.6 plus 32 plus 32 plus 32, because there's three of those. 207.6, a little over 200. 207.6. Then multiply all the tops, write it down. Multiply all the bottoms, write it down, then divide. Uh, I just want to check to make sure my number is right before I go on. Okay, close enough. So I take 207.6 times. 83.77 equals times 1 times 1. Divided by 55.8, enter, and divide by 2 again. So I have 155.8 grams. 155.83, 155.9 grams is what the book, the book answer says. Do they ask percent yield on that one? No, they just want to know the theoretical yield. So that's that one. And the last one, 35. Okay, this one was not too shabby in terms of dirty or messed up. So I'm gonna keep this one. On 35, we had a percent yield of the reaction with magnesium with excess hydrogen. There's a data table, if you're looking at that. And in the data table, the mass of the crucible and magnesium is 38.06 grams. And the mass of the crucible by itself is 35.67 grams. So when you subtract those two, the magnesium must be 2.39 grams. They give you the reaction, magnesium plus oxygen gives you magnesium oxide. A better way to do this on a test is just give you the names of everything, let you figure out the chemical formulas, and let you figure out the balance of equations. I'm not sure I'm going to do that, but I've had years where I had good classes, and uh, they knew what to expect, and you guys haven't been here all that long, so give, and our year has been messed up. But I would just, if, if you can do it from the names out, and you know that from the get-go, wow, it, it really puts it all together a little better. So ideally that's what's the best way to do it. Or because of the hybrid schedule and everything, we're not going to get there. Uh, so we have one, two, or two, one, and two. They give you that to you. Okay, so we want the percent yield. Well, in order to do the percent yield, you have to have experimental mass and, let me go back here, in order to do percent yield, 
you have to have experimental yield and theoretical. If you crunch these numbers, you get theoretical. So we're going to have to do that. There should also be a, uh, whoops. There should also be a uh, numbers that we can check for that, for MGO, okay? We can subtract and get those like, out of the table. Okay, so let's do the whole thing. We're going grams to grams, which means in our little mnemonic over here, we are doing, I think I gotta use this one. From here, all the way over to here. Okay? So we're going grams to moles to moles to grams. Grams, grams. So we're going to equals x grams mgo over here to the right. Now we've done enough of these, you should know the format now. And we're going to start with 2.39 grams of magnesium. Go to grams magnesium, moles magnesium, moles. MGO, mass MGO. Okay, and then grams of magnesium here, moles of magnesium here, moles of MGO here. Once you do that, all of that cancels out. Grams of magnesium cancels. You have moles of magnesium cancels. You have moles MGO cancels. And a 23, 24.3 plus a 16 is about 40 grams for MGO. Magnesium's 24.3. This isn't right, so it's off a little bit. Okay, it's 24.3 plus 16. It'd be 40.3. I'll add that in there. It's not off very much, 40.3, okay, comes out to be 3.96. Now this, we crunch the numbers to get it, is theoretical, so it goes on the bottom. I kind of wish I hadn't already done it this way. How do you get to 3.48? Because, like we did here, let me move this around so we can see. You have to get your experimental by measuring. And there's a data table for that. So our 3.96 goes on the bottom, no problem. But if you look in the data table, the MGO when you're done is 39.15 grams. Subtract 38.06 grams. No. Subtract 35.67 grams, the smaller one. Equals, and that should be 3.48. That's what goes here. So you divide experimental by theoretical times 100 should be 87.9% or something like that. Okay, you should be set for Thursday.